from you on the other side when we are just starting to celebrate for the new phase for Tokamak Assembly. We are around okay, this uh, very nice Provence landscape and in front of us indeed we have uh, what we call the Tokamak building, the Tokamak complex indeed, which is now completed. Welcome to the Poloidol Field Coil Workshop, where the European Domestic Agencies is manufacturing four of the six horizontal coils we need to have the magnetic cages to be assembled. These coils, indeed, are made of, of cable. You have a sample of this cable. The cable is made of superconducting materials. This filament, made of a titanium nobium, okay, you have inserted them in a jacket because they are fragile, they are in ceramics, and they will not be able to sustain the huge magnetic forces. So this jacket is a stainless steel jacket, very heavy indeed, and inside you have a pipe where the liquid okay, helium will flow to cool down this superconducting material at minus 270 degrees in order to have it superconducting and able to transport up to 70,000 ampere of electricity. Let me explain to you okay, these coils. As I said, we have six of these coils. The smallest one are 10 meter diameters and are small enough to be transported. They are manufactured in China, in behalf of Europe, and in Russia. The largest one, 17 and 24 meter diameters, could not be transported and are manufactured in this uh, workshop. How we will proceed in order to make the huge magnetic cages? We will position the three lowest coils, okay, in, uh, in the um, uh, cryostat, and we will clip, okay, the 18 vertical coils, we name them toroidal coils, and we will see some of them very soon, in such a way that we have uh, associated the coil with the vacuum vessel because the sector of the vacuum vessel will be pre-assembled with the coils. And once we have positioned the nine vacuum vessel sectors with the 18 toroidal field coils, we will position the six okay, upper coils and we will weld very precisely all together the vacuum vessel sectors in such a way we have a very rigid okay, magnetic cages. The main challenge for ITER is the size, as you see, 24 meter large, nearly 20 meter high, with the precision because we need to align the magnetic line very precisely. So in this workshop, you could see behind me this okay, frame, the yellow one, which will be indeed the uh, support for the impregnation of the large 24 coils, 24 meter coils. In front of us, we have the 217 coils which are already manufactured. This one is named PF5, and it is completed just we have to uh, install the connection and this one is a PF2 where we are still to impregnate okay, the pancake we have piled up when we have winded okay, this cable on the uh, appropriate table. And so now we are able to check, to test these coils and we do it in the tunnel we have just behind. We will cool them down at minus 90 degrees at the temperature of the nitrogen and so we will check that the mechanical and electrical properties are according to specification. We could not cool them at the lowest temperature of minus 270 degrees because the cryogenic plant is not yet ready. So let's move now and see the latest okay, coils on site. We just arrived a few weeks ago from China. And so you will have the full collection, the 24, which has on its way to be manufactured the two, okay, 17 diameter coils, and very soon the one of 10 meters. So you see, all these tools have been very precisely designed and, uh, okay, manufactured in order to be able to uh, manipulate 
all this various equipment. I'm sure you see the tunnel, okay? We could open the tunnel, position the coils, and make, okay, the testing properly. And so, while we are progressing on this long corridor, nearly 250 meter long, we just arrive and look at what is the PF6, the number six, the smallest coil just in front of us. We just arrived from China and we and we will check it. So here it is coming from China by boat and the uh, unship at Marseille Harbor. And you see we have prepared another small tunnel for the checking. And this has been qualified for this uh, mechanical and basic electrical property, but not yet with uh, the other one, which are okay at very low temperature as we explained. So you remember now, okay, three type of coils, the largest one still ongoing to be manufactured, which will be okay, ready when we need them in order to be able to assemble the uh, uh, toroidal field coils as well as the vacuum vessel by 2022. And this one, which are already, okay, manufacturers and uh, ready to be moved in the assembling hall. 24, 17, and 10. And when you see this one, which is already so large, you have difficulty to imagine what will be the 24 one. Very precisely and very rigid. And it will be moved on a trailer entering in the assembling hall we will visit in a few minutes from now. So if you agree, let's move to the other workshop where we will see the toroidal field coil, which are not manufactured on site. They are small enough to be properly transported and uh, uh, assembled here. Okay, let's move. Thomas Shabolik and uh, Martin Bavrik at the Hungarian Center for Energy Research. Thank you both very, very much. Tomorrow we will upload these files onto the ETER Public website so that it can be an educational tool for students and teachers from all over the world. You can build this. Yes, you can make your own tokamak. 
in the privacy of your own home if you're a fan, or in the classroom or in your maker space. And you can follow along with us during ITER assembly phase. Now your tokamak, like this one, will be a bit smaller than the real thing. This is exactly 1 100th scale. So whereas the ITER tokamak is 30 meters high, 30 meters in diameter, this will be 30 centimeters high, 30 centimeters in diameter. The outer part, what I've removed here so that we can see in, is called the, the cryostat. This is manufactured in India. It is a giant thermos, uh, a stainless steel uh, chamber that will um, hold the rest of the tokamak in a vacuum and in a clean and cool environment. Then you have inside, as you can see, this donut-shaped chamber, uh, the plasma chamber called the vacuum vessel. And we have removed two segments so that you can see inside, but this will be in nine of these sectors, each one 40 degrees to make a 360 degree vacuum vessel chamber. This is where we inject the hydrogen gas and it is where um, we heat it until it becomes uh, a plasma and then fusion energy can occur at 150 million degrees. So how do you contain that with the magnets? We have three magnet systems. These circular ring-shaped magnets are called the poroidal field coils. This is what Dr. Bigot was showing you on the ITER worksite. So the first of these is um, among the smallest, the, the PF5. This was procured by Europe, manufactured in China. This one on top, also quite small, being made in St. Petersburg, Russia. The rest of them are too big to make and ship, so they're being made by Europe right here on the ITER worksite. And they help to confine the plasma and to pinch it away from the walls. Second system is here in blue. These are the D-shaped or toroidal field magnets, half made in Japan, half made in Europe. There are 18 of these, and together with the six PF coils, they will create an invisible magnetic cage that keeps the superheated plasma away from the walls, from the steel walls. The third system, which also helps to create this cage, is the central solenoid, shown here in green and manufactured in the United States. Now, this one will be the, the most powerful magnet. It's manufactured in six coils. In addition to help to create the cage, it makes the magnetic flux lines go in a spiral and then in, in sort of a twist and it s sends these long sustained pulses through the plasma. So just this week we actually received the very first of the vacuum vessel segments um, sectors from Korea with these port stubs added by uh, Russia and this means that with the toroidal field coils that already have, have already arrived we can start to assemble the actual ITER machine. That's why we are celebrating ITER assembly today. So there are, of course, many other pieces, more than one million components overall in the tokamak. But I hope that now you have the general understanding of how we create use magnetic so confinement to create fusion energy in a tokamak, field coil which we workshop hope will power the future. Where we are preparing we the coils, which has been manufactured outside the ITER site, by the domestic agencies. Indeed, you have in front of you two coils, which are the first two one which will be pre-assembled with the vacuum vessel coming from Korea. They are the number 12 and 13. As you can see, is very detailed shape with a lot of interface with many other components. If you see what is there, you will see the knot, which will allow us to fit the poloidal field coil we have visited a few minutes ago. All this part will be assembled with all the components in order to make this coil a large magnetic cages, okay, very precisely positioned and able to provide all the very large magnetic field. We could move on and you could see the way it is made is not exactly the same as the other. The cable are pre-positioned on okay, a stainless plate and we will pile okay, the support and at the very end we will put them as it is with the polyidol field coil with, with the polymeric resin and this package will be positioned in a case. The case is made of steel steel, stainless steel, and you have to understand, in order to contain the coils, 
and not to break them, you have to position the external surface of the coils package, okay, of the cable package, and the internal surface of the, of the cases with a precision of 0.2 millimeter, while the length of these of this, uh, coils is nearly 20 meters and nine meter large. A very, very strict challenge, as you could imagine. Myself, I am admiring the capacity of the workers to have made these things so precisely under the specification of the engineers. It took years in order to demonstrate the feasibility of all these coils, which will be, as the PF coils, cool down I minus 270 degrees with the liquid helium. So this is the back of the coils, or the upper part of the coils. I would like to show you now the lower parts when it will be vertically dressed. OK. And you see, you have a huge frame because we don't want to deform the coils. The coil has to be very precisely okay, uh, maintained in the shape he has. Uh, and it's why uh, there is this heavy frame which uh, will prevent any deformation. So now we are entering uh, on the part which is the lower part uh, uh, where you have the electrical connection. So again, you see the amazing shape of these coils with, for example, the part which will sit on the cryostat base in order to be able to precisely okay, fix every part. And also this casing, which is just uh, uh, embedding the uh, electrical connection. We will need to connect okay, these coils, 18 of them, to uh, the electrical network and with an uh, intensity of 70,000 amperes at a temperature of minus 270 degrees. And now we are preparing the last checking in order to be sure that there is no leak in the piping delivering the liquid helium. It is on site after the traveling, we are able to do that and to okay, well prepare this coil in such a way they will move to the assembling hall and be dressed up and assembled, as I will explain in a few minutes, in the okay, assembling hall with the vacuum vessel sectors. For me, it's really impressive to see the quality of the work. And for example, when I see this shape here, the complexity and all is according to the strictest okay, uh, uh, specification. So let's move now to the next okay, step where we will see the cryostat, uh, the cryostat base is already in the pit, but okay, we need now to position what we call the lower cylinder and upper cylinder to assemble them together. On the work site, crossing by the upper cylinder of the cryostat, it is 30 meter diameter, nearly 10 meter high, and it has been cocooned in order to maintain a controlled humidity and temperature. It comes from India, and it has been pre-assembled on the work site in the workshop we are now visiting. We need, we pass by near the. Uh, assembling all the cleaning facility building as well as a radio frequency heating system 
Okay, all these pieces are necessary in order to ensure that we will have full control uh, of the hot plasma we are now preparing. So, really amazing to see this large cocoon, okay, lower cylinder and upper cylinder. Indeed, we have opened the cocooning very recently because we want to start the assembling and we need this lower cylinder to be positioned in the tokamak pit. So we just now <coughs> arrived to the workshop where we have been able to manufacture the uh, cryostat component. Indeed, it comes in 54 pieces, but each of them weighting of the order of 100 tons and the size could be of the order of 10 meters. And now they have been assembled in four main pieces. The four main pieces is the base, okay, like a can, when you have a bottom of the can and you have two cylinder, you will put one over the other. You will weld with the base, weld between these two cylinder. And after that, okay, you have a cover, a top lid. As you see in front of you, you have the lower cylinder. So it's a huge stainless steel part with a lot of opening. All this opening is in order to allow some robots to come in in the vacuum vessel as well as the cool water and the hot water we will extract and also many diagnostics. Uh, this cylinder is 30 meter diameters and we will have to fit the two pieces, okay, 30 meter diameter above the other 30 meter diameters with a precision of half a centimeter. The thickness of the stainless wall is six centimeters and it has to be leak proof. All the welding has to demonstrate that it will not leak even with a very high vacuum. So I propose that uh, you enter within the internal okay, part where you will see the size of the cylinder all together as well as uh, okay, all the very precise penetration. This penetration has been fit together in such a way they are fully aligned with the uh, two other parts. One, it is the vacuum vessel, and the other part is the bioshield wall you will visit quite soon. So very high precision and very tight okay, uh, element has to be assembled in such a way that you confine completely okay, the different parts uh, now. So I guess you understand the challenge and uh, India uh, as well as some European companies has made a wonderful job in such a way that everything is according to specification without any deviation so far. So, the size of the port, as I explained, is appropriate and in order to have a robot coming in, for example, in order, for example, to position the tiles which will be covering the wall of the vacuum vessel. <laughs> 